So the English Channel is a part of the Atlantic Ocean, you know, the body of water the Titanic sank in, which separates southern England from northern France. The narrowest part of that channel is the Dover Strait, a more or less direct line from Dover in England to Calais in France, which is about 34 kilometers or 21 miles long. Walking that distance would take you about eight and a half hours without breaks, so you would definitely have to, you know, bring snacks and something to drink to make that a journey by foot. Throughout the year, the water temperature does not rise above 20 degrees Celsius or 68 Fahrenheit, so I wouldn't want to take a swim in there without any protective gear, like, you know, a wetsuit, for example. According to the Channel Swimming Association, the body that tracks channel swims, the first person to cross the 21 mile straight between England and France was Englishman Matthew Webb, who completed the feat in 21 hours and 45 minutes in 1875. Since then, there have been 2,483 successful crossings, including 1,645 solo swims and 838 by relay teams. One of that successful crossing includes the crossing from Mercedes Gleitze, the first British woman who swam the English Channel. But we are not going to talk about her successful crossing. Oh no, we are talking about her failed attempt and how luxury watchmaker Rolex successfully used her failure for their marketing. About the 1830s, swimming emerged as a competitive recreational activity in England. Professional competitions were held and by 1880, the first governing body, the Amateur Swimming Association, was founded. But England wasn't the first country to discover competitive swimming, of course. Evidence of recreational swimming has been found even in prehistoric times with paintings from the Stone Age, you know, depicting human swimmers. As Europe and other parts of the world started to swim competitively, a young Mercedes born in 1900 in the sunny English coastal town in Brighton, discovered her love for swimming. Being, you know, very gifted when it comes to languages, Mercedes worked as a secretary and stenographer in central London and loved swimming in the River Thames in her spare time, which I definitely would not recommend doing today. Her love for swimming quickly turned into pursuing swimming as a professional career and with only 23 years of age, Mercedes broke the first record for the longest time swimming at once for a woman when she swam for 10 hours and 45 minutes straight in the River Thames. Four years later and after attempting it for seven times by then, Gleitze successfully swam the English Channel on the 7th October in 1927, being the first English woman to ever do so. Ironically though, it was some random lady's claim a couple of days later telling people that she had swum the channel faster that more or less forced Mercedes to swim the channel again but this time the water was significantly colder and so on her ninth attempt she carried something very special with her. Hans Wilsdorf, a German-born businessman, asked Mercedes to wear his new product during her attempt, a Rolex Oyster watch. Hans Wilsdorf founded his watch company Rolex in 1908. He was an early believer of the potential of the wristwatch and was convinced that pocket watches are going to be replaced by them sooner rather than later. And so in 1926 or 27, you know, sources seem to be unsure of the exact date, Rolex patented its first commercially viable a waterproof watch known as the Rolex Oyster. And what better way for Wilsdorf to market his latest waterproof invention by having it attached to a famous swimmer. And you have to remember, seeing any watch work underwater was a crazy sight for anyone at the time. So if Wilsdorf could prove that his Oyster kept the water out, even though someone swam, you know, the English Channel, for example, with it, it would be the ultimate marketing statement for his brand. Contrary to popular belief, Mercedes did not wear the golden Rolex around you know, her wrist, but on a ribbon around her neck. And unfortunately, after over 10 hours in the icy water, when she swam the channel with the oyster on, Mercedes was lifted out of the water, slipping almost out of consciousness because of the exhaustion and extreme cold. And her, by this time, ninth attempt to swim the channel failed. Luckily, people at the time were sensible enough and still praised Mercedes for enduring so long in such harsh conditions. And as it was proven afterwards that the random lady's story was just a hoax, people accepted her previous, you know, successful attempts as valid. But how did Rolex cope with, well, being attached to a failed attempt? 
they simply never mentioned it. Because the fact was that the Rolex Oyster not only proved itself to be totally waterproof, it was also entirely intact and working. Apparently, there was a newspaper man on board on the boat that hoisted Mercedes out of the water, who also noticed the watch was still working and so, a month later, Rolex published this a huge advertisement in an English newspaper reading. Rolex introduces for the first time the greatest triumph in watchmaking, Rolex Oyster. The wonder watch that defies the elements, moisture proof, waterproof, heat proof, vibration proof, cold proof, dust proof. What a line. The huge story around Mercedes and the back and forth of the recognition of her record breaking followed by her so-called vindication swim where she was trying to prove herself again that only made mercedes gleitzer become a household name but you know rolex too and that was shockingly it to rolex it did not matter whether or not gleitzer was successful what obviously proved to be more important was the performance of their new waterproof oyster watch and her failure wasn't even influential in the slightest. Gleitzer continued to be a successful professional swimmer, attempting lots of other records and succeeding until she died in London in her 80s. As stated by David Silver in his book Vintage Rolexes, which I can totally recommend at this point, this marked the beginning for Rolex's brand ambassador or you know, testimonial or testimony concept and it proved to be very successful. Rolex nowadays is commercially the most successful and most popular watch brand. Their brand ambassadors include famous and successful people from all sorts of different you know, industries, like you've got James Cameron, you've got Roger Federer, or Lindsay Vaughn, for example. You know, a bit in the spirit of Mercedes Gleitzer herself, Rolex is also breaking records for sky high secondary market prices every other day. And that was it. My name is Jenny, and this was the story of how Rolex successfully used a failed channel swim attempt to brand themselves and became the most popular watch brand in history as always if you have enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up it really helps out my channel and if you want to see more videos like this or watch reviews i recommend subscribing to my channel and then i will see you in my next video bye